few years ago, I did a video on the Bitex transceiver. Originally designed by Ashraf Farhan, VU2 ESC, it was 20 meters SSB, putting out about five or six watts. It provided a simple and economical way of building a transceiver that was capable of having DX contacts. Just a few months ago, Farhan came up with another BitX. Designed for 40 meters, it suits our declining sunspot cycle. And it's a pre-assembled module. The only things builders need to do is to solder the wires onto the speaker, volume control, tuning control, and a few sockets. Possibly most surprising is the price, just $45 US. Unheard of for an SSB transceiver that's frequency agile. An hour later, you could put it together and be on the air. We'll go through the circuit. On the right is the crystal for 12 MHz. That's the carrier oscillator. On the left is the balance modulator and demodulator. You can see it's toyed on the top left and the balance potentiometer on the left. Moving right along, this is an intermediate frequency amplifier. There's actually two in what's called a bi-directional circuit. One transistor is for the signal path going one way and the other transistor is for the signal going the other way. You switch between them when you switch between transmit and receive. There's no switching of RF. All the switching is done at DC, i.e. switching the 12 volt supply rail from one transistor amplifier to the other. This is the crystal filter. It's on 12 megahertz and has a band pass of about three kilohertz. That chops off the opposite sideband. On the other side of the crystal filter is another bi-directional RF amplifier, same as before. Here's an RF mixer. This contains two inductors and four diodes in a double balanced arrangement. Its role is to mix the SSB at 12 megahertz, which has been generated with the VFO signal at five megahertz, producing a difference of seven megahertz. It's the other way on receive. This is another bi-directional amplifier, this time operating at 7 MHz, our operating frequency. Over here is a relay and RF filter. Three tuned circuits which make for quite a tight selective arrangement. If you want to modify this rig to other bands, you will need to change this part of the circuit. Here's our local oscillator, the bit that can be prone to drifting. It operates on 5 megahertz, actually 4.8 to 5 megahertz, because if you subtract that from our IF of 12 megahertz, that gives our operating frequency range of 7 to 7.2. There's also a buffer the following stage from this. If you wish to adjust the range slightly, there's a trimmer capacitor in the center of the picture. If you want to inject a signal from an external RF oscillator or a DDS, then you've got two terminals nearby that you can do it. But if you do wish to make this modification, then you need to take out the toroidal inductor and also one of the capacitors that allows the circuit to operate as a buffer amplifier rather than an oscillator. This is the microphone amplifier. It's right near the balanced modulator and carrier oscillator that amplifies the weak audio from the microphone and is used only on transmit. Used only on receive is the audio amplifier for the receiver using a common LM386 chip. This is the driver stage which provides some amplification on transmit only. This is our final transmitter amplifier stage. The blue square potentiometer adjusts the bias. I suggest you don't touch it. If you crank it up too much you may destroy the transistor. The IRF510 transistor is on the right with a heat sink. That's okay for seven watts, but not for higher amounts of power. The heat sink is at full potential, so you don't want to be shorting that to earth either. And finally, just under these wires is the low pass filter, which chops off harmonics above seven megahertz. If you do want to change the transceiver to another band, then you'll need to change that as well. To its left is the transmit receive relay. One feature of the BitX is that with 12 volts, it puts out about five to seven watts, but if you increase it to 
20 to 25 volts then you get about 20 to 25 watts output I haven't actually tried that but there are separate power connections if you wish to do it because you can't subject the remainder of the board to that high voltage otherwise you'll blow it up also note that you'll need a better heat sink than this to dissipate the extra power all you need to do as constructor is to solder the end of the connecting wires onto the various controls and sockets and then put it in a box. There's instructions on the hfsignals.com website. In the wiring of the tuning control, I spotted a minor error. The black wire should be soldered to the left lug of the tuning control, not the right as indicated. The photo shows the correct connection. One two one two one two. Oh, oh. One two three four VK three Y testing. Hello, hello. Uh, VK three Y E VK four double AC straight three. Very good there, Peter. Thanks for the fifty seven. You're five and five here, mate. A fifty five and uh, seven watts is doing very nicely indeed, mate. Give us help. Several modifications have already been produced for the bit X. I found the audio was too loud and was distorted when the volume was cranked up. There's too much gain. You can reduce it by removing the capacitor between pins 1 and 8 of the LM386, just like you see here. The rig's main problem is frequency drift. You can help stable a bit by making the inductor a bit more rigid. Use glue, wax or similar. Another modification is that there are six resistors that are 100 ohm. They are in the various IF and RF amplifier stages. If you increase their value by taking them out and substituting 220 ohm resistors, then that makes the rig a bit more stable. If you're adding a DDS, or external VFO then you need to remove the coil there's also a capacitor in here that you need to take out the idea is that that converts the oscillator into a buffer stage and there is actually connection supplied for an external VFO that's quite a worthwhile modification if you want better stability or a digital frequency readout If you're not confident about building a transceiver from scratch or even assembling a kit where you have to insert the components, then the BitX is worth considering. Just an hour of soldering onto large terminals on your external components and sockets and you can be on the air. I highly recommend it and suggest you read more details on the HF Signals website which I've linked below. It's coming up for Christmas and what better than an early Christmas present to yourself. Check out Minimum QRP. It's a Kindle ebook that explains all about low power amateur radio and how you can get the most from it. Operating, strategy, equipment and more is just a few of the things covered in its 200 plus pages. For more information go to vk3ye.com or search Minimum QRP in Amazon. If antennas are more your thing, consider hand-carried QRP antennas. Many practical ideas and projects on antennas, antenna couplers, accessories and more. Again, more details on Amazon or vk3ye.com.